Many people consider the study of ancient languages to be boring. However, every now and again, the guy reading Latin in the library will just burst out laughing. The reason for this is that there are modern interpretations of ancient words that can honestly just strike you as rather funny. And if you need proof, well, this is the Greek and Latin quiz that you probably never got when you were in high school. If you had, well, there's a chance you might just have kept studying ancient languages. Number 10, Albus. Albus is a masculine Latin word that means white, so basically the headmaster of Hogwarts walked around with a first name of white guy. This is also interesting in the fact that Alba is the feminine version of the word white, so in theory when you talk about Jessica Alba you're essentially saying Jessica white girl. Albus is also the root word of albinus, which brings us to albino. This makes sense since albinos have the primary feature of being, well, white. J.K. Rowling was a smart woman to make Albus's last name Dumbledore and not something a little more overt like Supremus. Number 9. Hysteria. Hysteria is the ancient Greek word for womb, and also birthed words such as uterus and hysteria. This is not a coincidence. For centuries, being hysterical was also called the traveling womb disease. As such, men could not suffer from hysteria. However, this is one of the rare times in which a totally sexist perception had a favorable result for the victims of the sexist attitude. In the 19th century, the cure for these female crazies was widely considered to be a screaming orgasm. As such, doctors' offices actually had mechanical vibrators and water pulse treatment, which was intended to produce the desired result. We can imagine that some patients needed the vibration treatment four or five times a week, perhaps, both for actual fits and, you know, also as preventative medicine. Number 8. Panther the Greeks actually had a fair idea of how to tell you that this was a cat not to be messed with. Panther evolved from the Greek word panthera. Pan in Greek means all or of everything. Thera means harvester or reaper. And if you put it all together, the term panthera means the reaper of everything. Any decent betting man would not pick you over a beast called the reaper of everything, and your chances against a cat that could take the soul of the grim reaper if necessary, well, they're a little bit better than incredibly slim. Number 7. Melissa have you ever known a Melissa who was perhaps a bit flighty? Have you ever known a Melissa that was what the guys in Animal House would call morally casual? Well, don't hate them, they might just be living up to their name. Melissa is actually a Greek word that means honeybee, so flighty is just all a part and parcel of the nature of the name. Melissa was also the name of the nymph who attended to Zeus. To this day, we still talk about how nymphs were kind of the enthusiastic creatures, so don't blame someone, just try to do their name justice. Number 6. Pterodactyl. This word may well make you lose respect for anyone who ever named a dinosaur. Pterodactyl is the shortened version of pterodactylus, which is the masculine form of a Greek word meaning winged finger. Yep, that is the extent of the name. They found some bones of a wing with fingers attached, so the entire damn species gets saddled with the name winged fingers. Number 5. Diphtheria. Everyone knows that diphtheria is a terrible disease, but prior to vaccinations, diphtheria was practically a death sentence. You may not have realized how screwed the very name implied that you were. Diphtheria is an ancient Greek word that means pair of leather scrolls. But to be blunt, the leather scrolls in this case are actually your lungs. Lungs are supposed to be soft and pink and squishy, not something like Indiana Jones unwraps while searching for buried treasure. In a way, saying diphtheria is kinder than spelling out the very definition of the word. Number 4. Fuck you. Imagine the following scenario. You're a high school freshman sitting through Latin class and trying not to snore, and you come across the word fuck you. It would take you all of about two seconds to associate that word with you while swearing at someone. Never mind that it actually means I do. The fact that it sounds exactly like you'd expect, well, that's what's important. It gets better when you learn other ways to use the word. For example, he, she, it, does is fuck it. If you want to order someone to do something, you would simply say fuck. I will do fakiam. We will do fakimus. In short, you have one of the few Latin words that could potentially be wrapped by J and Silent Bob, as well as one that could get you into trouble with mum for no reason other than the word it sounds like. Number 3. Hippopotamus. The hippopotamus is actually a cousin of the pig, but it's not named as such. Nope, hippopotamus actually means river horse in ancient Greek. Really? 
And it's at this point we really wonder what ancient people must have been up to to look at a hippopotamus and go, oh yeah, that's a river horse. Definitely. Number two, penis. Roman men would not have called their naughty bits a penis, as that is the Latin word for tail. This leads to several interesting implications. First of all, the wrong people have been getting a piece of tail for centuries. Second, a Roman using the word would likely have talked about how their cat spent the whole day doing nothing but chasing their penis around. If the meanings of words had stayed the same throughout history, children everywhere would be having fun at birthday parties, playing pin the penis on the donkey. And that would be really strange, especially if the blindfolded kid sticks the penis in the wrong place. Number one, vagina. Vagina was originally the Latin word that meant sheath or scabbard. It can only be speculated that it was a man who defined the female sex organ as a place to put my sword. Imagine being a member of the Roman cavalry riding into battle with your vagina flapping against your hips. You'd also have to have great skill in selecting the right vagina for your sword. Obviously, you'd want a sword that could fill it completely, though the more your sword is in the vagina, the better it would fit. You'd also, of course, have to make sure that the vagina was the the right size for your sword. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe. We've got brand new videos just like this every day of the week. And if you're looking for something else to watch right now, why not check out our other channel called Biographics? You'll find a link to that on the screen now. And as always, thank you for watching.